guys. All right, I'm gonna show you how I make a very simple, this is called no recipe, guys. I'm, oh, most of my recipes are no recipes. So if you follow me, you're gonna get to see how I cook. But it's all a matter of feeling your dough, uh, feeling with your hands, using your visual with your eyes, and that's how I bake. Now, because I wanna make this bread fast, I'm gonna be adding yeast along with my sourdough mixture. Now, if I was gonna let this do a slow rise, I would use only my sourdough and not add the, the yeast in my uh, recipe. But because we wanna speed it up and have this bake today so we can cut it tomorrow, uh, because that's one thing about fresh bread. Yes, if you want to eat your bread, you can eat the bread an hour after it's baked because nice and cooled off. But if you want to have a bread that you can slice really nicely, you want to wait till the day after because it's just easier for you to slice, especially if you're making toast. So I'm going to show you, not really a pumpernickel because I'm not using rye, but we want to make this a very high protein bread, especially if you're into exercising and building muscle and just the feeling fuller. That's one thing that protein does is it helps you feel fuller. So I'm gonna show you some of the things I'm gonna mix. Uh, for instance, I'm gonna take this because I'm gonna crush them up. I'm not gonna use big bits. So we're gonna start off with some chia. We don't need a lot, just a little bit of chia. We're gonna put a little bit of flax. And then if I need more, I will, I will add more. Some, uh, these are sunflower seeds. We're gonna add some pumpkin seeds. And we're gonna add some oats. There we go, and we're gonna blend this up. Maybe I'll put extra chia here. Look at this. It's good my counter is clean, eh? Okay. And we're gonna give this a rough chop. You don't want to over, you don't want to turn it into a powder. But a nice chop. I'm gonna add some extra oats just for fun. You see, there's like really no measurement, guys. That's what you want to do. And this is gonna add some extra and very nutritious and very delicious proteins to your bread okay give me a second all right guys i'll show you this is going to go into my look at that beautiful now you could use less or you could use more it's really up to you the more you put in the more your bread is going to have a little extra bite to it and if you want to just try it in the beginning, you could put less and then just keep adding when you make your bread. All right, so we're going to take some flour. I've got my flour right next to me. So I'm going to use one. They're heaping, but they're half cups. Maybe... There we go, three. If I have extra, I could always do something else with that dough. All right, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Again, salt really is up to you, taste. How about maybe a teaspoon of salt? And we want to uh, put some cacao in this because that's how we get that nice dark bread. We're gonna put one two so how many that i say i put there I'm being very clumsy today okay so three tablespoons of cacao okay like i said i want to speed up this bread so i am gonna add maybe i should just measure it let's see about one there we go one and a half teaspoons of quick rise yeast. Now, like I said, if I'm not in a hurry to make bread, 
I would just use my sourdough and just let it rise overnight. But because I want this sped up and I want the taste of that sourdough, I am using both. And I'm using my crooked spoon. Look at that. I made the spoon according to the wood. Okay, so we're going to mix all of this up. And if I need extra cacao, I will use it a little later. Get everything mixed up before you add anything else to this. Very easy. Making bread is easy. Making pasta dough is easy. My mother used to always say, when you put love and intention in your food, it's always going to be delicious. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now we're going to add, of course, my sourdough. Look at this. Now, if you don't have sourdough, you don't have to add the sourdough. Let's see, how much wood have I? I use maybe about a half a cup of sourdough, or maybe a little less. Yeah, I never really measure. I just put it in. Okay, maybe just a little extra. Okay, and to this we're going to add some olive oil. Okay. Wow. Okay. Someone said I always sound like I'm struggling. I am always struggling. Okay, we're going to put one. I guess about two of them. And that is delicious dark molasses. I mean, the molasses is sweet, but I always like to add a little bit of maple. Okay, so now we're going to get some warm water and we're going to add it a little at a time. Erica's already excited for this bread, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Warm enough? It could be a little warmer. Okay. And you know when your dough is coming together, guys. If you see, you see, I'm mixing. And this would be a very, like it's getting hard for me to mix. That means it's going to be a firm dough. So I'm going to add a little extra because I want a softer dough. And there's still way too much flour. You'll see when it comes together for you. And remember, if you see that, oh, I added too much water. Just add a little extra, just add a little extra flour. There's never mistakes in life. There's always lesson learned. Okay, as you could tell, my dough is coming together. And it's starting, I'm starting to feel resistance when I try to flip it. So that means I could put just a little bit and work myself in down to the bottom and again I feel the resistance I'm gonna add a little extra at the bottom and blend like I said if you feel your dough is too wet that's not a problem when you want to knead it just throw it onto your counter with some extra flour and you'll be good I'll put this on my counter. You see, you really didn't need that much water. OK, 
Okay. Now, if you want to make this bread, you can make it without the um, without the sourdough. You can make it without the seeds if you don't want the seeds. Sorry. And now, just put your fingertips because it is a little sticky. Because it's a seed bread, it's going to take a little longer to rise. But if you have the opportunity to have a uh, bread proofing either with your stove or what you could do is just heat up your stove and when it feels like a hot summer day in there, not hot because then you're going to cook your bread, but it has to feel warm just like a nice summer day. Make sure that's shut and then wait a few minutes and then put your bread in there and that's going to help it rise. That's only if you don't have any bread proofing or just have the patience and it will eventually come up. Okay, we're going to put I'm going to just do it on there. We're just going to wet it with some oil. Okay, I have my special Sheet that I use when I rise bread. It's just one of those bags that I get from my um, my flyer bags. These are food safe and what I do is just I wash and reuse the same one. So that goes on top. I am going to bread proof my oven. Start and I'm going to put this in there till it rises. And that's how simple it is to make bread with no recipe whatsoever if you don't put any seeds in here the bread is going to be a lot softer and it's going to fluff up even more this is going to be a little heavier but that's okay it's going to rise anyhow and it's going to be super delicious and super nutritious that's the main idea is to have a very healthy piece of bread that doesn't have any preservatives in it and because there is sourdough in here, it even lasts longer than if you would make bread without the sourdough. Bread without the sourdough tends to go bad a lot faster if you don't consume it. Now, for anyone who has never started a sourdough, let me just put this in my oven. Because that's where my magic happens. But I just want to show you uh, my sourdough. How do I make sourdough? Basically, I put a little bit of flour and a little bit of water and I let it sit in a cupboard. I do put a lid on top. I don't close it all the way. And every day, I take a little extra flour. And if you find it's getting too thick, just put a little bit of water, just a little bit, mix it. Again, cover it. Put it back in your cupboard. The day after go get go look at it if you still see there's no bubbles put a little bit of that flour it's gonna start bubbling on you I'm not sure if you can see it in there but there are beautiful beautiful bubbles and you're gonna get sourdough starter and then you use a little bit every time you bake you do want to feed it every day now if you're not one that bakes every day then I would say when you make your sourdough, put it in the fridge after you've got sourdough going. Put it in the fridge and when you need it, the day before, give it some flour and take it out of the fridge and put it in your cupboard. And then you can use it the day after. You're going to be able to use your sourdough. So you're going to have to plan around your sourdough. If you're not one that makes a lot of bread or naan bread, like we're always making something. If it's not pizza, it's bread or it's naan bread. And if I'm not using it, I feed it every day. And when I see I'm not using it for a while, it goes into the fridge. And then, like I said, if I need it, I want to make bread, I'll have to pull it out and wait to make bread the day after. I pull it out, feed it, put it in my cupboard, and the day after I can use it, it's going to be nice and bubbly for you. So it's not hard, and you could keep this. Now, I've had this going for, I don't even know how long this sourdough has been around. It's a very old sourdough, but you could keep it for hundreds of years. That's how long you could keep sourdough if you want to keep it going. And you could actually make bread without having to use the yeast. I'm using the yeast only for the reason that we want to make bread right away. Nobody has the patience of waiting for it to rise. So I put some yeast just to give it a boost. But we love that taste of that sourdough. I'm going to show you when the dough has 
rise you want it to rise at least double so I can let it rise once twice even three times it's not a problem for me because I am going to cook it later and we're only going to eat it tomorrow once you make homemade bread trust me it's hard to eat any other bread but like I said not everybody has the time so if you want to make bread once in a while it's still good to have some sourdough just make a little bit you can use it in pancakes you can use it in a lot of things just remember now that I've already used it I am gonna take some flour goes in and I need a chopstick there we go and I'm gonna mix it but now mine's a little thickish so I'm gonna add just a little bit of water and there we go I fed my sourdough and it's gonna go in to the cupboard and I'll have some of this ready either for later on because mine is so active um, I don't close it I leave it that it breathes uh, so I'll be able to use some later if I want to make some naan bread or it'll be ready for tomorrow and if I'm not using it tomorrow I feed it again there's still room unless it's really up to here uh, then I usually make something whatever pancakes or whatever I'll make something with it but very simple to do guys so anyhow I'll see you in a bit and I'll show you what that bread looks like after it's been rising okay let me just zoom out just a little bit there we go look how beautiful this bread is okay I just want to wet my hands and I will be cooking it there we go I'm gonna be cooking it in this so good there we go and I am gonna make it rise again just gonna put a little bit of flour on top and if I need a little extra flour later on I will add it and just cover it again with my plastic and back into the oven at proof and this now is going to rise really quickly and then i'm going to cook it uh, i normally cook it at 400 for 30 45 minutes but you will love this bread it is so full of nutrients it is high in protein and it makes delicious toast or sandwiches for your family so i'm going to see you when I'm ready to put this in the oven just to show you how high it gets again and then we're gonna cook it so I'll see you in a little bit guys look how beautiful this bread is that's only a piece of paper so now I am going to preheat my oven at 400 and this is just going to keep rising until the oven gets nice and hot and then I'm going to bake it for about 30, let's say about 35 to 40 minutes. Beautiful. Normally I would make incisions on top but the bread has cracked on its own. And this is going to be, be a beautiful, beautiful bread that Eric and I could enjoy in the morning. Okay, so it's gonna go in for four, uh, sorry, preheated at 400, and I'm gonna put it in for 35 minutes, and I'm gonna check it if I have to. I'll even put in a little longer, 40, even 45 minutes. But this is gonna be super delicious, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like once it comes out. And here it is. Ooh. I want to burn myself. And I'll tell you why I use the paper because it makes my life easy to get it out. Okay.
and there you go how beautiful is this bread now my bread is a little dense only for the reason because we put lots of uh, seeds in it we have um, hemp uh, no we didn't put the hemp seeds this time I didn't have them we put chia seeds flax seeds we put pumpkin seeds we put sunflower seeds and that gives you uh, more sturdy more robust bread and that's what we would like to have it in the morning while well, Erica and I enjoy eating that type of bread plus it, it's also loaded with extra protein but it really is a beautiful bread it does not smell it does not smell of chocolate it uh, smells of like a pumpernickel the only difference is I don't have the rye flour in my in uh, in this bread I didn't have a lot of dough so my bread isn't as big I'll show you pictures of some that I make that are really big depends on how much flour I throw together that day and that's how I usually bake I never really bake with uh, with recipes so some days my bread will be a little bigger some days my bread will will be a little smaller but there it is beautiful beautiful bread all the way through is really really delicious you have to give this bread a try so there you go um, we're gonna use this later on we're gonna make ourselves our we're gonna break our fast at 12 and uh, we're gonna make a beautiful sandwich with my homemade cheese and some sauerkraut and tomato and avocado it's gonna be super delicious so I hope you give this recipe a try don't be afraid to try making bread without a recipe if you make a little dough you get a little bread if you make a lot of dough you get a lot of you get a lot of bread very very simple and yet very delicious okay and if you don't like all that flour on top you could just brush it off with a brush I don't mind the flour on top but yeah you could just simply tap that off and it'll come off so hope you like this recipe guys and I hope you give it a try don't be afraid to to bake or to create something without a recipe all right guys i'm gonna say i love you and i'm gonna see you in my next video Para